All right, you guys didn't miss anything. I didn't cover anything while I switched cards. There is so much about this outbreak it says that we don't know. Our public officials should be honest about that. Instead, it seems like they are flying by the seats of their pants and that they are in saying whatever they think will keep everyone calm. We are potentially facing the greatest health crisis of this generation. And bad science and false assurances are not going to help anyone. Potentially. I've been saying all along, this isn't when we panic. This is when we prepare. Sadly, Barack Obama, it says, just continues to make bad decision after bad decision. This includes his very foolish decision to send troops in uh, to fight Ebola. I'm not against that. I'm really not. If they are medical and they are setting up things to contain this, to make sure that it doesn't get to our shores, and if they are being quarantined as they are supposed to, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I understand other people do. It's fine. You could go either way with it. But it's certainly not the worst thing that we are seeing right now. That's for sure. I mean, that we have bigger fish to fry, to say the least. Um, Pentagon says Ebola strike team does not violate posse comitatus. Infowars, Kurt Nemo. This is bothersome. Because you very easily could use the Ebola outbreak as an excuse to bring the government into our streets and the military, I should say the military, into our streets. Posse comitatus, for those of you that don't know, is a law that makes it illegal to do that. Why? Because first of all, what they're about to implement here is going to encourage a lot of people to hide their symptoms because they don't want to be taken into some FEMA camp and thrown in an airtight coffin, so they're going to hide their symptoms and give it to everybody else while they're in denial. We weren't seeing a lot of that in this country, but we're going to when this kicks up, which is going to make it worse. Second of all, the government has used terrorism as an excuse to kill our rights to go after people for things like smoking pot, through the spying and other avenues that we've covered here a lot. Well, you got to see they're going to do the same thing with this. Well, it, you know, Ebola blows over, and well, we're going to keep them on the streets because we found that it helped. And it brought crime down. So we're going to keep the troops on the street. Dangerous, friends. Dangerous. It is illegal for a reason. It's been uh, illegal in most free societies since the 1200s. Pentagon Press Secretary Real Admiral John Kirby on Monday dismissed constitutional concerns over the decision to deploy the military in response to the Ebola crisis in the U.S., well, of course, in this administration, they fired everybody and the generals that uh, don't agree. We actually do have the legal authority to do this, Kirby lied to the Morning Joe. This is nothing more than potential support, and I stretch potential support to civilian medical authorities if and only if they ask for it. Uh, how about the Patriot Act? It is only going to be temporary. Remember that lie? Uh, Iraq is going to pay for their liberation in oil. Remember that lie? This isn't going to violate posse comitatus. He again lied. On Sunday, Obama's defense secretary, Chuck Hagel, announced the formation of a quick strike team to provide short-term assistance to the civilian medical professionals in the U.S. and to make people hide their symptoms. Despite Kirby's remarks, the move, in fact, represents a serious breach of posse comitatus. It became law in 1878 at the end of the Reconstruction. It is intended to prevent the federal government from using troops to enforce state laws. Civil and military separation has a pronounced history in the Anglo-American law. It is mentioned in the Magna Carta in 1215, and I don't mean the gay Z song. In 1327, Thomas Earl of Lancaster argued that so long as civil government is able to enforce the law, military involvement in civil law enforcement is unlawful. In 17th century England, Oliver Cromwell experienced resistance to the military enforcing laws. In the American colonies, British soldiers enforcing laws provided a major cause for the revolution. It's one of the reasons we left England. Now we're bringing it back. Since September 11th, the federal government and the Pentagon have argued that posse comitatus is no longer relevant. Yeah, because they want more control. It is time to rescind the existing Posse Comitatus Act and replace it with a new law. Retired Colonel John Brinkeroff uh, argued on December of 2009 to the Journal of Homeland Security because he wants to see the death of the nation. <sighs> Friends, if that doesn't make you sick, then you should go live in ISIS or something. 
InfoWars one more time. CDC cuts Dallas quarantine halfway into incubation period. This could prove to be a dangerous idea. The fiancé of Ebola victim, Thomas Eric Duncan, will be released from quarantine today. However, the CDC-mandated 21-day quarantine period Louise Troll, along with her son and two nephews, endured is only half the recommended period. The World Health Organization, a recent studies conducted in West Africa, have demonstrated that 95% of confirmed cases have an incubation period in the range of 1 to 21 days. 98%, it says, have an incubation period that falls within the 1 to 42 day period. But because it's not normal, you've only got a 3% chance. So if you get Ebola, hey, you're just, you know, 3% chance happen to get you because the government just doesn't know how to do a 100% health, healthy job, even when it only means tying somebody up for 42 days. They can't even get that right, people. They can't even get that right. Two more stories to get to in our Ebola update number four. It begins, a hazmat-wearing passenger spotted at the airport. This is October 15th, mind you, but I, I didn't get a chance to get to it, and it's important. I need to get the graphics back up. Uh, would you like to see graphics? Well, good. Donate to me at the correct views at hotmail.com. All money you give to me goes towards a better show. I don't have a lot of money to put into it, but I'll put my graphics back over here like they were as soon as I can afford to do so. The other computer died. Zero Hedge. Last week, we hinted at what was to come as Ebola fears spread across America. Today, we get confirmation. As the Daily Caller reports, one passenger at Dole's International Airport outside Washington, D.C. is apparently not taking any chances. The female passenger, dressed in a hazmat suit, complete with a full body gown, mask, and gloves, was spotted Wednesday waiting for a flight at the airport. I say wise person. I say very good idea. Guys, the last thing I want to get to, the dum de dum de dum de of the day from Breitbart TV. Nurses, we were told to call the authority for Ebola protocol. Yeah. That, see, the... the uh, the authorities didn't bother to see to it that the nurse has already had the information. Now, if somebody comes strolling into the room, bleeding out the eyes, just call us. Dumb of the day, friends. A statement from National Nurses United on the treatment of Dallas Ebola patients said the nurses were asked to call the Infectious Disease Department to learn the policies of how to treat Duncan. The statement which was played in its entirely the statement which was played in its entirety on CNN Wednesday morning also reports that Ebola training at the hospital was optional. Nurses had been left to train each other and that nurses who had interacted with Duncan simply continued to treat other patients. Is this an African hospital that I'm talking about here? According to the statement, there was no advanced preparedness on what to do with the patient. There was no protocol. There was no system. The nurses were asked to call the Infectious Disease Department. The Infectious Disease Department did not now have clear policies to provide either. So, you know, if you're living near a nuclear power plant, you know most hospitals don't even have enough potassium iodide to treat the whole community. We see this time and time again. The union added that advanced preparation that had been done by the hospital primarily consisted of emailing us about one optional lecture or seminar on Ebola. It was obvious. Yeah, 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 it's just the worst disease uh, that we know of. But you don't have to show up to know how to treat it. Just spread it over the whole hospital. There was no mandate for nurses to attend training and what nurses had to do in the event of the arrival of an Ebola-like patient with symptoms. There was no hands-on training, no use of personal protective equipment for Ebola, and no training on the symptoms of what to look for, and no training on the symptoms of what to ask. It's the dumdy of the day, friends. Uh, I send out a dunce cap of the month and do a long story with all of the major dunces once a month, and you can see it. Um, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself, and look up the dunce cap of the month. Also, friends, do remember that the Arcadia Grill is where you can find some of the best food you've ever eaten. If you're anywhere near Canton, Ohio, even if you're in a neighboring state, drive over, go get the rigatoni, go to the bar, get yourself something delicious to drink, and remember that you heard about it from the Correct Views. Good night, friends. God bless, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Correct Views.